Hi everyone, welcome back to another video in the Web Security Academy series. In today's video, we'll be using a union-based SQL injection attack to query the database type and version on Oracle databases. All right, let's get started. This lab contains a SQL injection vulnerability in the product category filter. So we've got SQL injection and it's in the product category filter. You can use a union attack to retrieve the results from an injected query. To solve the lab, display the database version string. So the end goal is to display the database version string. All right, and they give us a hint over here. We're not going to look at it just yet. Let's access the lab. We'll add an analysis section. Okay, so it says make the database retrieve the string that is displayed on the screen. So the version of the Oracle database. All right, so if we look at the application, it's the same or at least similar shopping application that we've been dealing with in the previous labs. If we click on gifts, so the category gifts, it refines our search on the items that are related to the gifts category. And we can see over here that the category parameter is included in the URL, and that's the field that is vulnerable based on the description of the lab. So to confirm that it is vulnerable, I'm going to add a SQL character, a single quote that will result in a syntax error, which should result in an internal server error at the application level. And it does. Okay, so this looks like it's vulnerable to SQL injection. Now, whatever we enter in this field over here gets displayed on the page. And that's why we can use a union based SQL injection to exploit this vulnerability. And to do that, we said there is uh, two steps that you need to do before you can output data from the database. And the first one is to determine the number of columns that the vulnerable query is using. Now I can tell there has to be at least two columns because you could see over here, each item has two entries. One is the title of the item and then the description of the item. So my assumption is there's two columns, but there could be other columns that are not displayed on the page. And that's why we have to test for that. And the way we do that is by using this payload over here. So order by and the column number. So when we order by a column, it should order the column on the page. And if we try to order by a column that does not exist, it should throw an internal server error. So we know there's at least one column because we can see it on the page. And so this should give us a 200 uh, response code. Okay. So let's do that using burp. And for those of you that are not familiar, this is pretty much a man in the middle proxy that sits between the browser and the application and any requests that happen through the browser get sent to burp first before they get sent to the application and any responses from the application get sent to burp first before they're sent back to the browser. All right, let's put this over here and click on the proxy tab. So you'll see over here, it's set at localhost 8080. And I'm going to use my Foxy proxy extension to set it to send requests to burp. All right. And I'm going to click on gifts one more time. And you'll see over here, it intercepted the request. Now, since I'm going to be sending multiple requests, I'm going to send it to repeater and I'm going to work from there. Okay. So let's turn off the proxy. And go back to repeater. All right, so uh, let's copy our payload and then do control U to URL encode it. Hit send and we get a 200 response codes confirming that we have at least one column. Now, if we do two and hit send, we also get a 200 response code confirming that we have at least two columns. Now let's try with three and we get an internal server error. 
So let's write that down. What that means is that we're trying to order by a column that does not exist. And since we did this iteratively, that means that the number of columns that is used by the vulnerable query is 3 minus 1, which is equal to 2. All right, the second thing to do in a union-based SQL injection attack is to determine the data types of the columns. And we said we do that using a union select null query. So we know there's two columns. And what we're going to do is we're going to test each one using an, a text value or a string. And if the data type of this column is not compatible with the data type of the column that is used to filter on category, it should throw an error telling us that this column is not of type string. And if we don't get an error, that means that the column is also of type string. Now, if we go back to the application, you could see over here, both columns contain alphabets. And so they're both of type string. But let's test it out regardless, just in case. So I'm going to put both of them because my assumption is that both of them are of type string based on what we see in uh, the browser. OK, again, we need to URL encode it. Hit send. And I think we messed something up. So let me do this one more time. Okay, let's copy it. And we're missing a quote and then control U to URL encode it and hit send. Okay, so we're getting an internal server error again, which makes me think that this is an Oracle database and I'll explain why in a second. So I should have known that based on just the lab description. It says querying the database type and version on Oracle, but I didn't read that properly. And the reason I think that this is an Oracle database is because I know for sure that these two columns are of type text based on the browser over here. However, this still gave me an internal server error, which does not make sense. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to search Oracle select statement. Let's click on this entry over here. OK, so it defines over here how you perform a select statement in Oracle databases. So it says select the number of columns from the table name. If you go down over here and click on Oracle dual table, you'll notice over here that it says in Oracle, the select statement must have a from clause. However, some queries don't require any table. So in this scenario over here, we don't have a from clause and that's why this failed. Now, I don't know the tables that I wanna extract from, and this is just me putting strings in the columns. And so I need some dummy table to use in the from clause in order to be able to confirm the data types of the columns. And over here, you'll see that it says Oracle provides you with a dual table, which is a special table that belongs to the schema of the user sys, but it is accessible to all users. And so you could use it in scenarios like this, where the data that you're outputting is not actually coming from a table. So let's try this over here. And then we'll do control U to URL encode it. Hit send and we get a 200 response. So now we know for sure that this is an Oracle database. And then if you go down, you should see A and A. So the content being outputted on the page. All right. So those are the first two steps in a union based SQL injection. The next thing to do is to output the version of the database.
Okay, and to do that, we're going to go back to the exercise and look at the hint section because there you'll find a SQL injection cheat sheet which tells you what the command is for outputting the version on each type of database. So if you go down and then in the section database version, it tells you how to output the database version when it comes to Oracle databases, when it comes to Microsoft databases, when it comes to MySQL databases, and so on. So we're looking for this one over here since we know it's Oracle based on the fact that it threw an internal server error when we didn't enter a table name. So the command is over here. Okay, but we have to put that in our union based SQL injection attack. So it would be union select the banner. And then over here, it's still two columns. So we still have to put a value. So null in the second column. And then we're going to say from b dollar sign version and then the comment characters and let's copy that and put it over here and then again you need to url encode it that's control u hit send and we get a 200 response code Okay, so let's go down and see if we actually output it the version. Okay, let's make that a little bit bigger. So you'll see over here it started outputting the content. And the exact version we're looking for is this one over here. So Oracle Database 11G Express Edition release and so on. And if we go back to the page, it should say congratulations, you've solved the lab. All right, so we've successfully completed the exercise. If you would like to see a detailed version of the video where we both exploit the vulnerability manually and then script it in Python, check out the video linked on the screen. Also make sure to hit the subscribe and share button so that the video reaches a wider audience. Thank you and see you in the next video.